Hey, it's Radar for another entertainment blog coming at you with another edition of Movie Reviews and Observation number 106. So this week, my movie started off really bad and then it ended on a pretty good note. So the first movie I watched was called Above Suspicion and Amelia Clark, Jack Houston, and Johnny Knoxville were the main character. And they portrayed us as this really cool crime FBI informant romance type of movie. And you're just saying to yourself like... Yeah, I don't really get it because it was Johnny Knoxville trying to be a, a degenerate, druggy, bad parent, bad husband sort of situation. And I don't really take him seriously because you always think of the movie Jackass. You don't think of anything else. You think of just dumb movie. I can't really think of it anything seriously. And the whole dragged out drama between the informant and... The FBI agent who has a wife and this love affair and how she supposedly has the inside knowledge of every criminal operation happening in that small little town and all these other things and it, in Kentucky and it's like, yeah. And for an hour and 44 minute movie, it does drag on. It does waste a lot of time. It just, I don't get it. This movie was okay. Like, I don't know. Then I watched movie The Nest and again, an hour and 40 something minute movie and Jude Law, he's a talented actor. You know, sci-fi franchises, dramas, you name it, sci uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. But the movie about him and his wife living in the United States, and then because he's British, he moves back home and is a complete liar, and his job is pretending to be rich, and his wife does stuff with horses, and you're just like, I don't really know. And uh, I'm just thinking to myself, like, well, what is the point of this movie? to show how bad this marriage was and that Jude Law was a liar and he's a swindler and and that, you know, the relation that he has a long lost mother that he doesn't talk to, that it's just proved that he's a bad person. I don't know. It was really boring and very stupid in terms of why I made this movie in the first place. So again, waste of time. Things picked up when I watched the movie happily and it's funny, I'm watching this movie and you're like, wow a comedy, but it's a dark comedy with like murder and suspicion and mystery involved. And it's got Joel McHale, who I'm a huge fan of, no matter what the role is. Then you add the fact that you got John Daly, the stand-up comedian. You got Al Madrigal, the funny guy. Paul Shear's a great character actor in television. Natalie Z and Adam Morales have been on a few sitcoms here and there and TV shows. Natalie Z is right now on La Brea. But the fact that Paul Shear and her are like a married couple is stupid. And Adam Morales with John Daly is stupid. And then they had Breck Admire be in the movie. And we know him from Franklin and Bash and Robot Chicken. Stephen Root is the creepy dude in the movie. And then they have a lesbian couple. Because it's all about a couple's weekend. So they have to have a lesbian couple. And it has to be biracial too. So those are the other two people in the movie. How Magical is a single friend. The movie is basically Joel McHale and his wife. Who I never knew who Carrie Bechet is. They have this perfect marriage where they have sex all the time, they don't fight, and they've been married for 14 years, no kids, no nothing. All their friends are like, you know what, we're tired of this crap, so we don't want you to come to Couples Weekend. All of a sudden, they're like, nah, we'll invite you to Couples Weekend at this house that we rented. And and before they get to rent it, some dude comes over and says, I have a syringe, and I have a way to make your life like everybody else. If you take this, your life will go be normal. And they're not sure if, what, if this guy's pretending, if it's real, or whatever the case is. Because everyone's like, yeah, their life, their, their relationship is not realistic. And so they go on this weekend knowing that, that, knowing that you know, there's a dead body involved. Everybody's got these secrets. And the whole point of the movie is, like, revealing all your true secrets and stuff. So I thought it was an interesting movie. It's not the greatest movie. I thought it was odd. It was a lot more interesting to watch than those two dramas I watched. It wasn't the best movie, but it wasn't the worst movie. And again, a cast with mostly television actors who maybe like Joel McHale and John Daly have been in the occasional movie. It's mostly character actors and stand-up comedians. Because then in this movie, you also have Charlene Yee, who I know from stand-up comedy. She's dating Brecken Meyer in the movie. Then I watched this movie called Boogie about this like Asian-American kid whose parents sacrificed everything. And he's trying to be a basketball star, but he gets a lot of trouble and with schooling. And it's all about his father's and his mother's expectations, his culture expectations. And he's like this basketball star at school. And I did like the fact that in this movie, Boogie, like his best friend, you think, okay, this guy is a black kid. Nope. He's like, he said he's like Hispanic in a way. And I thought it was interesting because 
I've seen the kid before, but it was like, again, this was way better than the Jackie Ryan story called Blackjack, where it was like really bad writing and cliche and stupid. But this one, I felt like they did a really good job. Yeah, jo Jorge Lendenberg Jr., he was good. Like they said, rest in peace to Pop Smoke who play other basketball. I thought the way that this movie is written and the character development and the acting from each character was all around a really good movie about this kid trying to make it. Maybe he goes overseas and plays. Maybe he goes to college and get a scholarship. But there's a lot of things that he screws over in his life. So I thought it was okay. An hour and 20-something minute bio. I don't know if this was really a biopic. But it's a coming-of-age story. And I felt like even if it's not a biopic, they did a very good job at, at telling the story about this Asian-American basketball prodigy star. Then I watched a great documentary called Street King, How We Got to Sesame Street. So like everybody growing up, you watched your classics like Arthur, and which was on PBS. You watched your cartoons like Rugrats and Hey Arnold and Doug, and you watched The Muppets. Well, here's Sesame Street. They're telling you how it all started, how they got Jim Henson involved, uh, all the characters on the show, the puppeteers, all that. It was a really good one. And the whole point of documentaries is you get to learn about things that are interesting to you, or if you're completely new to the topic, it, it completely teaches you everything. This wasn't a Jim Henson movie, so it just only touched on certain parts of his life. But for an hour, 40 minute movie, learning about a acclaimed television show that everybody watches as a kid. I even watched the Israeli Hebrew versions while growing up as a kid. So I thought that was also pretty good. So I would suggest this. And they're right. Certified Fred and Rosh. Use fresh tomatoes, like rotten tomatoes. Usually I'm like, I don't get why it's certified, but this was really good. Then I was like, great. I went back to watching a really crappy movie called My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To. And the only saving grace was it was barely 90 minutes. It was about these three young adults who live together. They're siblings. One is an ailing sick brother, and the oldest brother doesn't want to be there. He hates his life. He wants to leave. The sister is kind of controlling. And somehow they keep the young guy alive. And um, I forgot to mention in the movie Boogie, the guy playing his father, really good acting out of him. Seen him before. But yeah, so it's like they do some sort of way to keep the brother alive because he's really sick. There's murders, there's blood, there's organs. It was just really weird and creepy and a lot of wasted dialogue and a lot of wasted scenes where you're just bored out of your mind. And you would think that happens in a long movie. In a short movie, when there's a lot of boring wasted scenes and wasted dialogue, you're just like, okay, this is really creepy and weird. I don't know as I've, if you've paid attention to any videos I've done before over these 100 plus videos. A theme that I, I, I'm trying to get a point of. Why are these movies being made? What is the audience? Why did anybody put any money into this? Why was it shown at festivals? Why did these festivals, they think this was a great thing? Like, to tell me that it was at a couple festivals, like Tribeca Film Festival, it's like, no, this was a waste of time. It was a weird, horrible movie. Don't ever watch it. Then I at least ended the week on The Waterman. Again, certified restaurant tomatoes, they were correct. David Owalio supposedly directs this movie where he and Rosario Dawson are married couple. He was in the military, so the son gets used to living with his mother. His mother gets sick with leukemia, and he doesn't know how to handle it, but he's one of these smart, really bright kids. And the cool thing is Lonnie Chavis is the young Randall in This Is Us, so he already has been good at acting. And they have the likes of Alfred Molina and the likes of uh, Ma Maria Bello. So it was interesting that this kid does all this research. He likes to write comic books, graphic novels. Like, he's into the science fiction and the supernatural. He hears about this myth, Waterman, in this town. And he goes, I need to go find out. So Alfred Molina helps him out. This girl helps him out. Because he was told that the Waterman came back from the dead and, he's, and, it, and he could save people's life. So he thinks if he goes out on this adventure to this other town that's far away that was destroyed years ago that he can save his mother who's dying. And it was a really good movie because a lot of venture, a lot of, uh, you know, imagination, good children acting, good adult acting. There was a few, you know, scenes here and there that were a waste, and you would think in, like, a short movie that you would not have wasted scenes like that. But, you know, it's a kid's movie, so they're trying to get going along. But still, this was a pretty good movie. Great kid's movie. So I'm definitely going to say the best thing that I watched this week was Street Game. How we got the Sesame Street. Like, the documentary was ex entertaining and interesting. Then I could say the fact that Pookie, even if it wasn't a biopic, was a really well-told and written, put-together basketball movie. And Waterman was a very good kids movie. And then if you take the odd but interesting with a really good cast led by Joel McHale, you'll, like, happily, because you'll think it's a weird and weird not. 
Just don't waste your time watching the likes of Above Suspicion. My heart can't be unless you tell it to. And sorry to Drew Law the net. Thanks for listening to another show, Movie Observation. This was the 106th. For On the Red Entertainment Blog, I'm Radar. See you guys next time.